Welcome to the channel guys. My name is Captain Joe Buskins. I'm a full-time fishing guide and a second generation professional boat builder. And uh, I am up underneath my buddy's 23 foot Skeeter today. And we were about to do a little bit of minor compounding and waxing. But when we got to looking really close, we noticed that the Joko is actually completely rubbed through and you can see some fiberglass fibers exposed right there and right there. So now is the time to go ahead and repair that. We don't want to put a bunch of wax and compound on there and contaminate that surface, but we do want to seal up that fiberglass and those fibers before we put this thing back in the water. So this is going to be a DIY project. If you own a boat, I can almost guarantee you that this will happen over time and it's going to help you guys fix it. I'm going to show you how to do it right, do it the way professionals do it so you guys hang tight we're gonna get ready to put some material on this boat and get her all fixed up all right guys we have made it up underneath here i hope y'all can see me we've got the got the gopro on the alligator clamp and what we're going to do as far as prep to start this project off is i'm just using a little bit of acetone dispensed here important to make sure your acetone is marked in a bottle i know we got that in something other than a uh, marked bottle but that works for this application and what we're doing here is we just want to be sure that we wipe this down nice and clean get any residue off the bottom of this boat so if you guys don't have some kind of a automotive style creeper that you guys can work off of i would highly recommend it you're also going to need some compressed air if possible now what i would typically recommend doing is getting kind of upwind from where any dust might fall on you now normally it would be a good idea to have a fan or something but we basically want to put a light texture on that surface wearing a mask and some gloves some protective eyewear is a good idea always when you're working with stuff so generally i would say that's 80 grit but i'm being really really careful with it a 120 150 180 could work you just want to put a nice nice uh surface on there and then you would want to blow the dust blow the dust off and this is important you want to do one more wipe down i'm going to fold that cloth so that we're on a new part of the rag and we got clean cloth we don't have cloth that's previously been wiping the surface and may be contaminated and again i've got other videos may be easier to follow because they're right side up you're not upside down like we are on this one but surface prep is a big deal folks if you're new to gel coat work spend plenty of time making sure the surface is clean that there's a good texture on that surface all right guys we have wiped that down with some acetone we got our trusty heat gun which that's kind of like a commercial grade hair dryer don't go out and buy one if you don't unless you plan on doing a pretty good bit of this kind of work but a good hair dryer would actually work to warm up the surface sometimes after you wipe something down with acetone it'll cause some condensation to form on the surface and you don't want that so just remember that surface prep is a big part of a quality job and you want to be sure to keep moving when you're using a heat gun like this because they do put off a substantial amount of heat. So, all right. That is probably good enough. Just warm to the touch will work. I've got a whole gallon of black gel coat and I've got some clear catalyst set up in my little dispenser. The catalyst we're using is the Norox 925. Again, you guys have seen that in a number of videos. And generally for like blacks especially this boat is up underneath the bottom this is going to be uh just a generic black just kind of what we call a straight black i've got a little mixing blade and i got a little small detail paintbrush there and a clean nice clean mixing board and what i'm going to do i don't need a large amount so what we're going to do is we are just going to use this blade to get a little bit a spoonful or two of gel coat on this board easier than pouring the full gallon out all right here we go a little bit more and i'm going to probably mix a little bit more than we actually need because on these small amounts if you just mix a tiny amount it is very very hard to get the catalyst ratios correct so that should be enough to get us started and as a reference there's 
there's my finger and we're going to use this little metered mixing cup and it's not going to take but just a few drops generally that's going to be about enough now i know some of you folks may want to get scales out and measure that the catalyst puddle is probably about as big as the end of my pinky finger and then the span of that is about the width across the length so we're going to go ahead and mix that very thoroughly with a little bondo brand that's a flexible blade that i have cut down to a narrower profile that's something you can do typically these blades come in wider widths i'm going to mix that a little bit you want to be sure you don't have any spots devoid of catalyst generally gel coat will cure as long as there is some catalyst in it but just remember that usually one and a half to two percent is kind of where we like to be on these smaller batches and smaller amounts when you go thicker with laminates and whatnot a lot of times we may get down around one percent but just want to turn that over mix it thoroughly we're going to give this about four or five minutes of mixing time and then we're going to get ready for our application we are back under here I'm gonna warm this up just a little bit again because we are trying to move this repair job along. And if you're new to doing this kind of work, gel coats and resins, temperature definitely affects them. The colder it is, the slower they cure. And also a good time to mention if you guys are doing this kind of work and you don't have what I call a mechanics creeper, um, I would go buy one, go get one. They're well worth the investment. I actually picked this one up rode all over town yesterday and they had them at harbor freight for like 39 bucks which was a pretty good deal so uh yeah if you need a good mechanics creeper harbor freight it's a good place to pick one up but your local napa a lot of times lowe's and home depot that kind of stuff will have them as well so y'all i know it's going to be a little tricky because we're upside down underneath the boat and i do have other gel coat repair videos as well that or else we're on the channel but what I'm doing is I'm just using this blade to apply some of this. It doesn't have to be perfect on this initial application. We're gonna, we're gonna smooth it out. But I did mix that gel coat very thoroughly. You guys, I do appreciate all y'all's support of the channel very much. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. All right, so. We have gotten a coat on there and we're gonna jump back to the first area that we touched up and I'm just gonna hold this blade flat with the bottom of the boat. Make a pass just like so. And hold it flat with the runner. It's amazing how that can smooth it out. That's all you gotta do. I'm gonna show you guys that in a second, but man, that really, really does a nice job. Same here. Hold this blade kind of parallel with the runner. Y'all, that looks pretty good. Forgive the shake. I'm gonna go ahead and unclamp the camera and try to show y'all a little better view of that. It already looks better. I know again it's kind of tricky there's the upper one so generally you kind of got to know when to leave well enough alone that already has sealed up those fibers that's looking pretty good we're probably going to give that about an hour or so to cure so we've got our second batch mixed up there folks kind of the same as the first batch nothing too tricky there and we're going to be adding a little bit of the sanding aid now sanding aid is also known as modifier C. That's kind of one of the other names for it. Um, I'm gonna clamp this, you guys bear with me. I'm kind of working solo today. So camera, camera work can be a little tricky. So again, modifier C or sanding aid on the last coat is what you're gonna wanna do. If you don't add that, the gel coat's gonna remain tacky or sticky and not ever cure properly okay sorry about that y'all had some technical difficulties so i'm going to add about a half a cap 
full of the modifier C, maybe a quarter of a cap full. You gotta be careful if you add too much, it'll thin out the gel coat. If you don't add enough, it's gonna be tacky when it cures. But gel coat is not like normal paints. Normal paints need generally need exposure to air so that they dry. Whereas gel coat, it's a chemical reaction. There's a curing process that goes and air or exposure to air actually causes a problem with the gel coat curing. If you think about it, most gel coat is actually designed to go in a mold. And a mold, when you spray it in, one surface is waxed and the other surface is exposed. And then most of the time you're going to be coming back on that exposed gel coat and laminating fiberglass. And you want it to remain tacky so that it sticks. But when you're doing patches or repairs, it's kind of different. So you're using gel coat in a way that it wasn't necessarily originally intended to be used. And that's why you have the additives like the modifier C and there's other things you can use. Now we did add the catalyst to this first and activate it, mixed it in really good. And then I added the modifier C. And again, we've got several other videos on the channel that you guys could check out. Slightly different methods in each one. Sometimes like for example, we're working upside down right on a corner on this repair job. Sometimes we're working right side up and we're working on a flat panel. Sometimes the panel is curved. There are different materials you can use and different ways you can work this stuff to get good results, kind of depending on what you're shooting for. But you can see we really, really mix that thoroughly. You gotta have that blended so that when you put this on there, it's gonna cure properly. Kind of more of the same though. We are gonna just use this little flat blade to apply just a nice thick coat of gel coat over the original coat. Raw fiberglass itself is not waterproof. There's kind of a misconception there. Gel coat helps create a water barrier, but even gel coat itself, if you leave a boat in the water for long periods of time with just gel coat, you can still get what's called osmetic blistering. You can see there, we just kind of made one pass. I want to touch it up a little bit. We'll make a second pass. Gonna try to make a long, continuous pass if we can. Working with Joe Coat. Pretty interesting stuff. It's, you have a limited time to work with it. So you gotta be careful and Pay attention to detail, but you can't take forever or else you'll find yourself with material that's kicking off on you. And that's, that's not what you want. All right, so I got that one initial pass there. i come back and do another. And another and another. Sometimes you got to get two or three to get it. looking the way you want sometimes you just have to know when to stop after several passes it may be obvious that it's starting to gel and the best thing to do is probably pause leave it at good enough all right that's looking pretty good, guys. Pretty good. I believe that's going to be enough material on there. We're going to let that cure. We'll see what uh, if we're going to add some more or if we're going to kind of prep that for getting back in service. Now's a good time to tell you guys for a thank you for supporting the channel. We really appreciate it. You guys, if y'all have any comments for us as far as content or things we could do to make the videos better, please feel free to... Leave us a note down below. 
And uh, all right, get ready for the next step here in just a few moments. We've let this cure overnight. And as you can see, there's a flatness to the black gel coat. That is gonna be the wax additive that we put in that second coat. And you can see there's kind of a ridge there that is of a different profile than the rest of the runners. It's in an area that was unaffected. And you can also see as an overview that we've masked it off with some black tape. This one's substantially longer, but it looks like we have enough fill in there. It is better to overfill and be able to sand it down than vice versa. So we are back underneath here, and I'm gonna do my best to document this for y'all. The uh, upside down sanding and repair work is tricky at best. So obviously we've got power tools here at the shop and I've got air tools, but I kind of wanted to show you guys if y'all were doing it at home and you don't have a compressor and you don't have a dual action sander, you can use the little 3M sanding blocks with the Velcro surface that I have shown y'all before. And then what I've got is we just use the Velcro backed. That's a 3M and that's 220 grit, which is pretty aggressive. If you're not sure about it, you might want to start with 400, but I've got a lot of practice in this department. I'm just going to use the 220 to kind of knock down the heavy, the heavy profile, the edge that is kind of extending over, knock it down, and then we're going to be jumping to 400, 600, 800 and polishing this up, making it look like brand new. And I'm going to be trying to give you all the best angle possible. Um, so y'all bear with me again. It's tricky to do this upside down stuff. So 3M. 3M sanding block, Velcro backer. And again, as a note, most of the time when we're doing this, folks, some mask, glove, eyeglasses, a lot of times I don't wear the mask, and it's only for a short period of time just so you guys can hear me a little better, and hopefully the quality of the video is a little better for you guys. But all I'm gonna do is I just stuck, stuck that on there. We got the tape bordering the boat, and I'm just gonna come in here take down the the heaviest material initially most folks I would recommend starting with 400 all right there's a close-up of that you can see we've already taken down there's what the ridge did look like. You can see the irregularities and then what it's starting to look like. Again, I think you guys get the idea. I won't spare you all the gory details. I'm gonna probably go ahead and put a mask on and spend the next 10 or 15 minutes getting that straightened up. I'll show you what she looks like in a minute. That's how you should look with the 220. You can see there's still some little profiles there that we haven't sanded all the way down. There's no point in that, but we've gotten all the big rough jagged stuff all knocked down same goes for this upper one and what you just do is you just work progressively we're gonna go from 220 to 400 it's kind of the typical again I'm using the little 3m foam block and got some of the, the sticky discs which make it nice now I'm gonna start doing a little bit of wet sanding here at this point I've got the trusty good old zep sprayer with just a little bit of water in it All right. a little spritz of water I'm trying to stay out from under this is where the masking tape helps keep you where you need to be. We're not getting too aggressive initially. We're just going to start knocking down some of those 220 grit scratches. Again, I've had an awful lot of practice doing this. Folks, go a little bit. Look at it. Go a little bit more, look at it again. It's okay to take your time. 
upside down gel cut work is not the easiest for sure it's looking better already I can tell you can see it's removing quite a bit sand a little bit take a look at it sand a little more look again We want to leave as much on there as possible, so sometimes having a few little imperfections is okay if it means you can leave a little more gel coat. And our trusty shop towels, rather than trying to spray the residue off, find when you're upside down it's better to just wipe it. We're using less water than we would if we were working on the sides. Again, always already looking much better. You can see it starting to come around. Yep, just like so. All right, folks, we have moved right on to 600, and this is what she looks like at this point. You can still see this is some of the very thin fill material, but profile is looking much better and with 600 grit we're even going to start working out into some of these areas that had oh the bunk rubs on them that is uh from loading this thing over and over again so again 600 just remember progressively work coarser to finer and i'm buying this in bulk those are the hook it hook it pads that's a 13937 if you wanted to buy it in a bulk format and uh man this adjustable this adjustable creeper that i've got my original one was from napa and it was really good napa didn't have one in stock and my other one was in really bad shape so harbor freight came through again 49 bucks man that was a good deal save the day yeah, we are getting down. I can really tell that's starting to... Again, we're not trying to remove any more gel coat than we have to. We want this to look good cosmetically, but not at the expense of durability. All right. You guys know the drill. Probably about 10 minutes or so of this. We'll see what she looks like. We have moved right on out to this flat surface where the bunks are running. Again, I'm just taking my time and we have now kind of shaped these runners pretty darn close to where they need to be. And I am just gonna systematically, we're starting from the front and kind of working, working back. A little bit of water in the Zep spray bottle. Really will help keep your sandpaper from loading up keep everything looking nice for you guys okay everybody we have now switched to a little flexible foam block you don't have to use that you could again use the 3m with the velcro but we've kind of got these little contours in here and i've switched down to 1200 grit at this point which is about as far as we're gonna go i believe and you can see there's already quite a bit of residue on these edges and this foam block works really good for kind of getting in these little creases and just kind of shaping and smoothing without being too aggressive or putting too many creases in the corners and 1200 in most cases is going to be good enough um, especially up here underneath the boat once we compound and wax that it'll be pretty hard to see anything wrong with this so again, you can see there's quite a bit of residue that we've been working on and making some good headway. But uh, 1200, I wanna finish this up and then I plan on putting some 1200 on one of these little Velcro sticky backs. And uh, we are gonna be sanding right in these areas. This will be the last of the wet sanding then it's on to buffing, polishing, waxing. It's gonna look good. 
So that's the result with the 1200. Definitely can see this thing profiling out. We got the upper area and we are losing light. Y'all can see it was daylight when we started outside. So there's a pretty good bit of labor involved. We're getting ready to run the buffing machine over this thing. So we have going through to recap you're going to start with uh i use 200 right on the edges to start with but that's pretty aggressive most people probably start with 400 600 800 1200 and in most cases that's going to be plenty especially for upside down underneath we're really not trying to remove again a lot of material we're just trying to get everything to shine again so yep that's the next phase i've actually got the big buffer set up here on top of the tire you guys can see elsewhere on the channel too if you guys are new here i want to welcome you guys and if you're finding the video informative and helpful and want us to see see us do more of this kind of stuff remember to give us the thumbs up like subscribe comment share all that good stuff and uh you can also check out other gel coat repair videos on the channel we have an assortment of them that we're using different methods in different places to show you that there's just not one way to do everything sometimes there's little variations you can do in different ways that work better for one person than the other but uh, okay, buffing and compounding next. We got our yellow compounding pad. That's going to be a medium cut. And we've got our 3M Marine Compound and Finishing Material. Y'all have seen me use that before. And I'm going to try to set you guys up. And Boy, is it awkward working upside down. It's doable, but man, it is, it is not my favorite. You got to want, you got to want it pretty bad to do this right but sometimes you can't find anybody to help you do it or sometimes just something you want to see if you can get it done and that's all good but you can see we are down to 1200 grit scratches at this point and i'm ready to start compounding this thing man we're just going to start really nice and easy this is a really clean pad so we don't have much compound on it so it may take a couple Loadings. Just start nice and easy. So we're gonna get after it. You guys can see the dust flying. Again, real good idea to wear a respirator, have a fan going. This stuff, all of the stuff we work with has some something in it, probably it's not good for you to breathe or get in your eyes. So just be aware of that. I'm gonna go ahead and proceed with this, get this compounded out and show you guys the results. All right, crew, there's the finished product under my buddy's boat. Beautiful black Skeeter there. I think it turned out really nice, looking pretty sharp. There's the man himself, the man with the plan. <laughs> All right, y'all, I hope y'all enjoyed that episode. Remember, this is something you can do yourself. It just takes a little bit of elbow grease, but basically wet sand and a good cut and compound. If you got a machine to polish it out, that's nice too, and a good marine grade sealant. If you enjoyed the video, give me a like, thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fishbump TV on YouTube. Catch you guys next time out.